Let the church say amen. Amen. Church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. God is good. We just want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you that are watching us via live stream this morning, whether that be Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever source you're watching us. We just want to welcome you here into the worship services here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. And we'd like to um, reach out especially to all of those that are members here of the Sweetwater congregation. Thank you all for tuning in um, on this morning and want to encourage you all to hold on. Hold on during this time that we do not know this time that we're confused and we do not understand what God is doing. That we ought to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding. In all of our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. He told us a long time ago that we would not understand his ways because he told us in his word that our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. As high as the heavens are from the earth, so far are his ways above our ways. And even though you may not understand it, it is best to just trust and obey. And I can assure you, if you trust Jesus, you trust in the right man. Amen. And I amen. just want to thank you all for coming this morning. And again, as has already been said, I would just ask that you pray pray for our elders and the leadership here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ that during this time that the God would be with them and just make decisions that are wise in the best interest of the congregation and pleasing in the eyesight of God. This morning I would ask that you follow me to the book of Acts chapter number 27. Acts chapter number 27 and we're going to read verses 9 and 10 for our consideration this morning. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away. But the word of God shall stand forever. What does that mean, preacher? After all you see is gone and gone away with, God's word is still going to be standing. So you can bank on God's word this morning. Acts chapter 27, verses 9 and 10. And the Bible reads as thus. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and with much damage, not only of the lading and the ship, but also of our lives. I want to give for a subject for thought for consideration this morning. It's time to come in out of the storm. It's time to come in out of the storm. I was thinking just on yesterday um, as I was out working and by the time it got time for me to finish, the, the bottom just pulled out. And I thought back to when I was a child and I would be at home and there was a little playground right down the street. And me and my cousins and them, we would be down there playing. And whenever the weather would get bad, I don't care how far away we was, you could hear my great grandma on the, on the porch come in out of this storm. And I think that is a warning for us, the people of God today, because we are going through a storm. We are going through a storm as we look around our country today. You turn on the 6 o'clock news, you turn on CNN, or if you read the newspaper, make no doubt about it, we are going through a storm. We are in a storm because many people, as a result of the current climate, are losing their jobs. People are losing their homes, and they don't see even have enough to make ends meet. People aren't able to pay their bills. There are families that are so depressed and stressed out that they don't know how they're going to survive. And since this COVID-19, we've seen a rise in the cases of domestic violence. And a lot of times you've seen head of households that are just taking out the entire family because they can't deal with the pressures and the stresses of the life that they have going on. But yet in the midst of the storm that we are in right now, there's still hope for us as children of God. There's hope for us right now and hope for us tomorrow, especially in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the psalmist said in Psalms 31 and 24, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Your hope got to be in God, first of all. Your hope got to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us got our hope in everywhere and anywhere except Jesus Christ. But the old hymn goes like this. It says that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean upon Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. 
The psalmist also said in Psalm 71 and 5, he said, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust, not just when I got old. He said, But thou art my trust from my youth. When I was a child, David said, I knew about the goodness of God. When I was young, I understood the blessings of God. And therefore, I know he's good to me now because he was good to me then. The psalmist said again in Psalms 146 and 5, he says that, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord God. Jeremiah had something to say about it in Jeremiah 17 and 7. He said, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. It is a sweet relief, children of God, in knowing that no matter what we are going through in this life, no matter what storm we are facing, there is hope that can be found in Jesus Christ for what we are going through now and even what we will go through in the future. In Psalms 37, 25, and 26, David said something. We know it. He said, I've been young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He said that he is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. Yes, God is able to take care of us even in the midst of the storm that we are in right now. But if you want to be able to survive the storm, you got to first of all come on in. Now, now in this pastoral scripture that we read about Paul the Apostle, it was a calming, Paul was a calming influence to his shipmates while they were trying to sail and navigate themselves through a dangerous sea storm. Now, Paul was on a ship as a prisoner being transported to Rome to appear before Caesar. And because of his faith and because he was preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, now Elder, Co Elder Coffey and Brother Campbell, just imagine if every time we got up to preach the gospel, we were in fear that somebody was going to come in here and arrest us because we were trying to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, in Acts chapter 27, verse 9 and 10, as was read this morning, Paul had tried to persuade the centurion and the captain of the ship to wait for better weather to come along before they set out because at that day and time the weather was becoming somewhat dangerous for them to sail and but the centurion and the captain of the ship had decided that they was going to take a gamble and take their chances and they decided to sail out into the sea despite the bad weather condition because they had some cargo that needed to be transported to Rome along with some prisoners that needed to be brought to Rome for imprisonment and because the centurion and because the captain of the ship decided against Paul's advice not to set out sailing into the sea since the weather had gotten bad the scripture tells us that they found them themselves sailing right into a dangerous storm. Question, has there ever been a time in your life that you found yourself in a storm simply because you didn't want to listen to nobody? Now, 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 mama was trying to tell you something. Daddy was trying to tell you something. Grandmama and granddaddy, they was trying to tell you something. Your uncle was trying to tell you something. Auntie, they weren't just trying to get on your nerve, but they were trying to tell you something because they saw a storm that was coming up. I mean, has there ever been anybody in your life that was trying to tell you something that was going to be helpful for you, but because you wanted to do your own thing and you did not want to listen to anybody, you found yourself in a storm that was hard for you to get out of? Amen. That's all of us right there. Amen. But even if you can't say amen, just say ouch because that fits everybody right there. All of us at some point or another have known what was the right thing to do. But yet on the inside of us, that's why the Bible says that we got to deny this flesh of ours. We got to deny it daily because even though you know what the right thing is to do, Satan will always present the wrong thing for you to do. And sometimes that flesh will lean towards what Satan would have for you to do. Now, the truth be told, the reason why the centurion and the captain of the ship didn't listen to Paul was because they thought Paul didn't know nothing about sailing the ship. 
What you gonna tell us? You a prisoner on this ship. What you gonna tell us about selling the ship? They thought the only thing Paul knew how to do was to preach and to teach the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But they didn't realize that Paul had been sailing before. And, and Paul had been shipwrecked a time before. And since he had been sailing before, and since he had been shipwrecked before, Paul knew what he was talking about when he told them, y'all, hold off until some better weather comes along. And not only did they see Paul just as a preacher, but they also Paul as just as a prisoner who needed to be transported to Rome. And that is a lesson for us to learn. And the lesson is, be careful how you look at people. Be careful how you look at people. Don't be so quick to pass judgment on people just because they may not have a college degree or they may not live in a nice neighborhood because they may be too old or too young. God can use anybody to give you some common sense. He can use anybody to give you some common sense. So here it is. And that's what Paul was trying to do with the centurion and the captain of the ship. He was trying to give them some common sense. That is some wisdom in going about sailing in the sea. But because they rejected Paul's advice, they now found themselves stuck in a storm. But yet no matter how bad the storm may be in life, just know that God is able to take care of us in the midst of the storm. Now, Acts chapter 27, in verses 21 through 26, Paul tells his shipmates some words of encouragement in the midst of the sea storm. And isn't it a good thing that when you're going through that somebody come along and give you some words of encouragement? Man, I thought I like nothing better than when I find myself down and out, when I got my head held down. I need somebody to come along and not bring no doom and gloom message. But I need somebody that's going to come along and reassure me with the word of the Lord. You may be going through right now, but the word of the Lord said, by his stripes, you are already here. The word of the Lord said, weeping may endure for a night, but judge shall come in the morning. The word of the Lord says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. The word of the Lord said, I will never put more on you than you are able to bear. When I'm going through, I need somebody to come along and remind me what the word of God said. Because truth be told, when you're going through, it's easy to forget the promises of God. That's why you need somebody around coach you up, that man, hey man, I see you slacking, pick yourself back up, get yourself back together, because you cannot sit right here and allow the devil to keep you stagnant. You got work to do. You got work to do. Now, 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 the word says, and, and it's a good thing to have some work. That's why the psalmist said in Psalms 27 and 14, he said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Oh man, what we gonna do? I thought we was getting over COVID-19. Now this thing's spiking back up. And we're going right back through the same. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Do, and that, you got to be like David. David found himself one time. David said he found himself in the midst of some trouble. David said, I looked in the north. He said, I saw war clouds in the north. Looked in the south, saw war clouds in the south. East and the west, I saw war clouds in the east of the west. David said, I just had to bring myself to the realization I can't look to the north, the south, the east, or the west, but I got to lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence it come my help. My help coming from God. Your help coming from God too. Your help coming from the Lord. Now Paul, Paul first tells the centurion and the captain of the ship that they should have listened to him. When he told them to wait until good weather had come to set out the sail. But because they did not listen to Paul's advice, they were now stuck in a bad sea storm. And because they were stuck in a bad and dangerous storm, they had now risked themselves and the ship for shipwreck. But yet in the midst of telling them that they were going to be shipwrecked, Paul also tells them to be of good cheer. Now man, you just told me this ship about to crash. And now you're telling me to be of good cheer? What reason do I have to be of good cheer? He says, he says right here, because, he, because there will be no loss of life in the shipwreck. Yes, the ship is going to be torn asunder, but no one will die in the shipwreck. And that is the blessing to know that no matter what I go through, no matter what storm I find myself in, it is a blessing to know that I am still in the hands of God. 
I may lose this, I may lose that, I may not have this and I may not have that, but as long as I know who my daddy is, I got to connect, I got the plug, I got a source to everything that I need as long as I stay connected to God. Notice what Paul said. Notice what Paul said. He said, the ship is going to be torn asunder, but your life is going to be spared. You, you, see, you see, God wasn't interested in saving the ship as much as he was interested in saving their lives. Because the ship don't have a soul that need to be saved. Amen, somebody. But their lives did. And, and you see, the ship can be replaced. But if you lose your soul, if I die and my soul be low, ain't nobody fault but mine. If you lose your soul, you can't get another one. That is why you are not put so much stock on material things. Because material stuff, it come and material stuff will go. Material stuff can be replaced. But your soul, if you lose it, it is gone forever. So therefore, God is interested in saving your soul. And your soul is saved when you obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not only does Paul say be of good cheer, but he also tells his shipmates not to fear because an angel stood beside him that night and told him that he would be brought before Caesar and God has given him all that was sailing with him to his charge. In other words, what Paul was saying to his shipmates that they was going to make it through the storm because Paul says in Acts chapter 27 and verse number 25 to take heart. He told them to take heart because Paul did say this, for I believe God that it would be just as it was told to me. Now, if God said we're going to survive, guess what? We're going to survive. If God said we're going to make it, guess what? We're going to make it. And even though we may not necessarily understand the conditions, we know what the conclusion is going to be. And that is that we're going to make it. We're going to survive. I know right now it's messing up your plans. You thought you was getting right back. You had bought you some plane tickets. You was going out of town. You was going to take you some vacation. All that time that you missed during the COVID-19. And now you're right back at square one. Sometimes God just got to do some things in our lives to re- Really let you know who's in control. You might be in charge for a moment, but God is in full control of your life. And if God said you ain't going nowhere, you ain't going nowhere. Now, now he says, he says it will be just as it was told to me. Now, while they were trying to survive the storm, there were some shipmates that wanted to jump ship. And they wanted to jump ship and they wanted to try and swim out to the nearest shore. But Paul told them that except ye abide in the ship. He said except ye abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. You see, there are some storms in this life, church. You got to ride it out. Every time a little rain comes, you can't be so ready to jump off ship and run to try and find the ship. There are some storms in this life that you got to ride out and you just got to go on through it. But Paul told them, except ye abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. But just as storms come, church, we also know that storms got to go eventually, don't they, right? For example, Hurricane Katrina showed up and showed out in New Orleans, but guess what? Sooner or later, it had to go away. Hurricane Rita showed up in Houston, showed up and showed out, but guess what? Sooner or later, it had to go on about its business. Hurricane David, you remember, showed up here in Florida, but eventually it had to go on about its business. Depression, and and we got COVID-19, we got social injustice, we got African dust, we got this and that, we got everything, but in the midst of it, I know God is still going to take care of his children so there are some things that we need to be reminded of and that is that we need to remain prayerful during this time number one we need to remain prayerful if you can't do anything else your knees ought to be ashy because you ought to be on them praying and talking to God Jesus says something in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 he said that men are always pray and not faint 
Don't grow weary. Don't, don't get so anxious because, and, and that's our problem. We get so nervous and we get so anxious because you're reading the news and then you get on Facebook and Facebook got its version of the news and you listen to this person, you listen to that person, and you just bogged down with all kinds of thoughts and ideas and all kinds of news and you find yourself getting nervous and you're anxious and at times you begin to question God. He said, I want you to pray and not be faint. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6, he said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving in your heart, let your requests be made known to God. If you got a question, God got an answer. As a matter of fact, he don't have an answer. He is the answer. He is the answer to all of your problems, your worries. Jesus is all that we need. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14, we know and if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I forgive their sin and I heal the land. Why is it that we are going through this again? Has his people turned their face? Why are we going through this? Have we learned from what we've already been through? Because you truth to be told, a lot of folks just as mean spirited as they was pre COVID. Then they are right now. And, 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 and the question is being asked what does God have to do to get your attention? How bad does the storm have to get in order for you to run to the shelter? How bad does the situation in your life have to get for you to recognize, hey man, there's something in my life that is not right. I need to get this right and I need to correct it because when I stand before God, I want to be right. I want to be well pleasing in his sight. And number two, we need to stay in his word. During this time, this time that we're having to be separated and we're not able to come together and, and study and things like we would like to in your own personal time. You need to stay in the word of God because just because you're not coming here don't mean the devil is going to slack up on you. You know that, right? That don't mean that the devil is going to give up. He is still going out. Guess what? He ain't taking no lunch break. He ain't taking no cigarette break. He ain't taking no kind of break. The devil is going out as a roaring lion seeking though that he may devour. And especially during a time like this when you're separated from the body of separated from the assembly he coming after you, you know it. True. and you got to stay in his word Psalms 119 and 11 says that old is my he said that word have I hidden in my heart not, not this right, not this ball of muscle right here that's pumping blood through your body. He said, thy word have I hidden in my heart. How can I hide it in my heart? I got to first of all read it. I got to first of all study it. I got to first of all be able to comprehend the word of God. Then I can hide it in my heart. So therefore, when I am faced with sin, I will know what the word of God said. So therefore, I won't be subject to fall into that snare. Same chapter, verse 105 said, That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Verse 133 of the same, he says, Order my steps yes, in your word. Yes. Now, now, we need to stay in the word. And, 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 and most importantly, you need to stay in the church. Amen. Stay in the church. On, the brother. psalmist says in Psalm 122 and 1, David said, we, and we quote it all the time, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord in spite of COVID-19. Are you still glad? In spite of the social injustice, are you still glad? In spite of your work condition, are you still glad to be able to serve God? Are you still glad to be able to live for him? Or are you only glad to live for him when you look in your refrigerator and you got a couple of ribeyes and a couple, you know, filet mignons and you got, you know, and your cabinet is full, your gas tank is full, your bank account is full, you ain't got no work. It don't really take any kind of faith to trust God when everything is on the up and up and everything is right but man when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place between I don't know and what I do know you got to find a place you got to find something on the inside of yourself faith the size of a mustard seed he didn't even say a sunflower seed. He said faith the size of a mustard seed. Just a little itsy bitsy, a little bit of something on the inside of you that believes that I can do it. So we need to stay in the church. Hebrews chapter 10 
Verse number 25 said, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of psalm is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're not assembling in person right now, but whenever there's a live service going on, you as a member of the body need to be tuned in. If your children are at home, you need to have your children around, and you need to be tuned in so that you can continue to grow in the knowledge and in the wisdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So not forsaking the assembly, stay connected to God. And lastly but not least, we need to stay with Jesus. You need to stay with Jesus. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9 says, he says that if we, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I had to put that out there because somebody asked me a question on last night. And they said, well, preacher Romans tells me that if I just confess with my mouth and I believe God, that I'm going to be saved. All right, he's giving you steps in a process for you to be saved. He's giving you steps that you can walk towards being saved, but that is not the complete station for you to be saved. You remember in the same book that we read when there was a jailer that had some prisoners there that night, and it says that God came that night and he shook the foundations of the jail. Those men were loose from their chains. They were set free, but yet every man was loose, yet they stayed right where they were, and as the jailer took out the sword and he was about to take his own life because as a Roman soldier during that time for you to lose a prisoner meant that your life had to be taken in that place and as they took out his sword being ready to take their life they said sir do yourself no harm for we are all here and it says that they, 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 that night he asked him in such a word he said what do I have to do in order to be men like you and they told him to believe and then later on in those chapters they said in that same night they took him and all of his household and baptized them straightway. So he believed, he confessed, but yet there was still something else that he had to do in order for him to really be saved. Take a trip over to Acts chapter 11 to the house of Cornelia. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit before they were even baptized, but they still had to be baptized for the remission of their sins. Now the ship that Paul and his shipmates were on in Acts chapter 27, it did get shipwrecked. And the ship was torn asunder by the sea storm that they were in. But yet all those that were on the ship, they made it safely swimming to the shore. But notice that verse 44 says in Acts chapter 27, it says, And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Now notice it said that some made it on boards. Some made it on broken pieces of the ship. Can I get a little theological at this point? And the boards in the scripture represent God's grace. While the little pieces of the ship represent God's mercy. In other words, Paul and his shipmates were able to survive the shipwreck and they were able to make it ashore because of God's grace and God's mercy. How are you going to make it through this time? By God's grace and by God's mercy. But notice where the boards and the little pieces came from. It came from that same ship. But before they were able to survive the storm and the shipwreck, they first of all had to stay on the boat. They had to stay on the ship. But before they were able to survive the shipwreck, they first of all stayed in their likewise church. If we're going to survive the storms that we are in right now, we got to come on in out of the storm. We got to stay on the ship with Jesus Christ. We need to stay in Jesus Christ so that we can be recipients of his mercy and his grace of which we need to live daily. I don't know about you, but I need God's grace and his mercy every day of my life. I don't just need it on Sunday. I don't just need it on Wednesday. I need it every day of my life. And what I like about being on the ship of Jesus Christ is you ain't got to worry about it getting shipwrecked because he's the captain. 
He is the captain. And as long as Jesus is driving the ship, man, you can just believe that you are going to make it to your destination. The old hymn says that it ain't no danger on God's waters. Guess what? You might run into a storm, but as long as you're on the ship with Jesus, you know that you are in a place that is able to survive the storm. As we talked about on last week, being a child of God and going through storms, you can get some of the best sleep that you ever had going through a storm because you know the man that is able to calm the storm. He's able to calm the storm. Not only is he able to calm the storm, but he is able to make that storm go completely away. What preacher, when is he going to make this COVID-19 go away? I was live. I gave you a date. Anybody that gives you a date and says when it's going to be over, they're lying to you because they don't know. This is just a case of God's business. And sometimes, as discussed, we pray and we pray and we ask God to change nations and change people and change circumstances. Be careful what you pray for. Because a lot of times God acts and we don't necessarily understand why he's acting the way that he's acting. When in actuality, our prayers are being answered. When in actuality, do you not know? I know people that have never talked about God, have never looked to God. During this time, they've been looking. They've been searching. They, they, they've been trying to find somebody that is able to give them an answer to the problems that they have going on right now. We ought to look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He sees the ending, and he knows the ending of it. So children of God, we ought to put our hope in Jesus on today. Stick with Jesus. Don't give up. Don't grow weary. I, I know that's the easiest thing to do right now is to get weary and, and to get worried and to, to be upset. Because, but why be upset and worry about something that you ain't got no power over? Why be upset and worry about something that you can't change? This ain't like a thermostat in your house that you can just go and change it the way that you wanted to. No, 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 no. God has did this for you to recognize, hey, man, some stuff is just above your pay grade. Some stuff is just beyond your skill level. Some stuff you just cannot handle. Some things you just got to take it to the Lord and leave it there. And that is what we ought to do. If you expect to make it, if you expect to survive, you're going to have to put your trust in Jesus Christ. And if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, and if you stay on the ship with him, I can tell you, you're going to make it. Maybe you'll make it on pieces. Maybe you'll make it on boards. Maybe you'll barely make it swimming to the shore. But however you get there, you're going to get there. And you'll get there not being able to say that you made it on your own strength. But you'll get there being able to say, I thank God that he did not forsake me when I was going through what I was going through. But his grace and his mercy stood beside me all throughout what I was dealing with. And it is only God that has brought me to this place that I am right now. And for that moment, you ought to give God praise and thanks because he is a deliverer. Not only is he a deliverer, but he is a sustainer. God will hold you up. When you feel like you're shaking, when you feel like you're about to crumble and fall, feel like you can't make it, God will hold you up and sustain you. But you need to stay with Jesus. In closing, there was an older couple. They had been married for some 50-some years. And it says that when they were younger, it um, says that they would ride so close together in the car that you couldn't tell if it was one or two people in the car. They were just that close together. So you couldn't tell if it was one or two people. And the husband, one day they was riding, he said, uh, he said, baby, what happened? He said, uh, used to be we riding and folk couldn't tell us apart. They couldn't tell if it was one or two people in here. He said, he said, nah, I'm over here and you over there and the car is still configured the same. Who moved? And maybe you feel like, hey, man, I'm going through storms, and man, where is God? I can't find God. I can't feel God. I, I don't see any trace of God. Have you moved? Amen. Have you gotten off of the ship? Have you, have you struck out trying to find your best route, your best way to get to where you want to be? I can tell you, Jesus will never leave your side. He'll be with you. It is only us that divert and get off of the path of God. 
And if you've gotten off that path, you need to get back on that path today. My brother, my sister, maybe you're watching us this morning and you're not yet a Christian. You have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. You're not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. I would have you to know that salvation is a free gift offered to all of us, but it came at a mighty high price. It cost our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ his life on Calvary's cross. He came that we might have life and that we might have that life more abundantly. If you desire to come to know Jesus today, you desire to be saved and become a Christian, you come by hearing his word, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your Lord and your Savior, being willing to be baptized with him in the watery grave of baptism, have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. And according to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, the Lord himself will add you to his body. And maybe you're watching this or maybe you're here today and you're standing in the need of prayer. Type us, write us, let us know whatever prayer that you're standing in need of. The Bible still says that the prayers of the righteous, they avail us much. And we'll be glad and honored to go to God on your behalf in prayer. And if you're subject to the invitation, we beg and we plead. Why not come to Jesus as together we stand and sing the song of invitation? It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, and I'm standing in the need of prayer.